Matthew chapter 7 verses 13 and 14 Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Hallelujah. The choices that we make are based upon the decisions that we have made some time back or the decisions that we're making today. The choices we make are either influenced by our childhood or by the friends around us or by the family members. So we make different choices. The choices that we make, the good choices, take you through the narrow gate and the bad choices through the Broadway that only leads to destruction and evil. So today, let us look at seven points to live a godly life that we can walk the narrow way, the, the way that God wants us to walk. And as we look at the seven habits of a godly life, we look at the first point in chap Mark chapter 1, verses 35 to 37. And when they had found him, they said unto him, All men seek for thee. And Simon and they that were with him followed after him. And when they had found him, they said unto him, All men seek for thee. Everybody was seeking for Jesus and they were searching for him all over. So basically, you cannot live a godly life until you lead a prayerful life. Because prayer strengthens you. It strengthens the areas of your weakness, whether they are fleshly weakness or spiritual weakness. But prayer helps you through that journey when you walk with the Lord. Because the book of life that I have in my hand gives you the strength to walk in His ways, to walk steadfast and strong in the ways of the Lord. Whatever you accomplish in life is done on your knees. If you look at Luke chapter 4, verses 42 to 43. And when it was day, he departed and went into a desert place. And the people sought him, and came unto him, and stayed him, that he should not depart from them. And he said unto them, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also, for therefore am I sent. Jesus promised us that when he goes up, the Father in heaven has promised us that he will bring down his kingdom. So thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, as we know the Lord's prayer. So when we get down on our bended knees, every problem has a solution to it. There is no question about the solutions that God has in our lives. So he helps us to walk the walk with Jesus, to walk the straight path, to walk the narrow path. Though it may look difficult, though the journey is, ha, has a lot of ups and downs, but that's the only way, the only way to Jesus, the right way, the godly way, and it is the way, the narrow way. The second point in the habit of a godly person is you have to put your trust in God, not your trust in human beings or the trust in the worldly things that we possess, but that your trust and your faith in the heavenly God, the God who is alive, the God who promises us in Psalms 103 verses 19. Okay, instead of looking at that, his word declares, trust in the Lord in all your ways, for you will be blessed. And Psalms 37 verse 1 declares, that do not worry over unnecessary things. We all fret and worry about the situations in our life. But the word of God declares, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto us. Everything is waiting for us. It is for the asking that we will receive. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. And as we thank him and praise him for this beautiful day, let us trust him to build intimacy with him. And when we have intimacy with him, he reaches out 
He guides us. He leads us. And if you look at the next verse, when you meditate on the word of God, which means to reading the book of life, Psalm 63 verses 6 to 8. When I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches, because thou hast been my help, therefore in the shadow of thine wings will I rejoice. My soul followeth hard after thee, thy right hand upholdeth me. Hallelujah. You know, it's looking, it's like looking into the mirror and beyond that. The Lord watches over us. He leads us through the still waters. He guides us. He protects us and he encourages us through the word of God. Because he has given us inscriptions. He has given us the inspiration to walk our life in faith. So when you focus on him, all your worries and concerns just drift away. And meditation helps us to stay alert to the wiles of the devil, to stay fresh and sensitive to what God wants to do in our life. So what do most people do before they go to bed? It is best to get down on your knees and praise our Heavenly Father instead of watching something which will completely distract our faith and our walk with God. Hallelujah. So where is God's private time with you? The last thing you need to do before going to bed is to hold on to the word of God, is to look at the word that he has given you, the word of encouragement, the word of life, to live a godly life, to walk the narrow way in him. The fourth point to lead a godly life is to be obedient to God, obedient to the word of God. Deuteronomy chapter 27 verse 10 declares, Thou shalt therefore obey the voice of the Lord thy God and do his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day. Deuteronomy 30 verses 19 also speaks about obedience. Following God means to live on a higher level, not on the same level that you're working on. That means you have to separate yourself from the people of this world, from the things of this world. It doesn't mean that you're living in a palace or somewhere else, but it means that you're living the godly principles that God has taught us to live. So you have chosen to live at a standard higher than the world's standard. What is the greatest threat in your life to your obedience to God? What is that temptation, that trial that threatens your willingness to obey God? That you will be able to identify when you start meditating on the word of God and praying to our heavenly father who is the alpha and the omega the beginning and the end he is the answer to all of your problems so I can only obey God if I have been continuously praying trusting in God and meditating on the word of God no matter what you have riches the worldly things a very beautiful house a palace you cannot rightfully live and achieve the word of God to achieve salvation without meditating, without praying to our Heavenly Father. You cannot live, you know, on two boats at the same time. Try putting your foot on two boats, you will just fall into the water. So you can only either follow God or follow the devil. There is only there is only one way, the narrow way, which will lead you to salvation, to eternal life. Amen. The next point is your dependence on the Holy Spirit. Now some of you, a lot of people talk about the Holy Spirit, not understanding really. Of of course, it's a whole big topic, but I'll give you a gist of why the Holy Spirit is so important. Because if we want to lead a godly life in this day and age, it is almost impossible to live the godly life without the Holy Spirit in us without receiving the conviction of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit guides us it convicts us as to what is right and what is wrong so that we can walk in the ways of the Lord surrender your life to the Holy Spirit Jesus told his disciples to wait in Jerusalem note Jesus told his disciples to wait in Jerusalem meet and pray until they were ready until they were ready and he meant 
for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Only then they could be equipped, they could be called to do what Jesus called them to do. That is go out into the world, perform miracles and wonders in the name of Jesus. Because it had to be the Holy Spirit guiding them, directing their path. For that is the conviction and that is the guidance and the anointing of the Holy Spirit that covers us from the evil wiles of the devil. Let us look at Ephesians 5.18 And be not drunk with wine, wherein in excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Means that we need to continuously fill our body, soul, spirit and mind with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Not any other spirit, but the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah! Now receiving the Holy Spirit means to live a life of spirit and truth. The life of truth. When you get saved, you are sealed as a child of God until God calls you home forever. So when you disobey God, you choose to go away from God. And it is the Holy Spirit which will bring you back to God, which pressures, puts pressure on you to walk the walk with Jesus. Because the Holy Spirit is moving in this world, doing the work that Jesus did, but doing it in the spirit world, reaching us, touching our lives and directing our steps when we hold on to him. And that's the work of the Holy Spirit on this. So that's why Jesus, when he, when he spoke to his disciples, when he told them to wait in that upper room, he was expecting them to be filled with the Holy Spirit so the Holy Spirit would guide them as to the discernment of what is right and what is wrong in this world. Hallelujah. So do you ask God any time to tell me what to do when you make decisions in life? When you talk about the narrow way and the broad way, do we ask God to guide us in all the decisions that we take? Let it be our education. Let it be our work, professional life. Or let it be the decisions we make in buying a house or getting married. It could be any of these decisions. Children. Some of the youth are so fast in making decisions. You know, our decisions are based on the, on the things that we find in Google search on the net. Our decisions are not godly based. So when that happens, we tend to fall. You know, and then we keep falling and falling until we realize that God has a reason that he wants us to walk in his ways because he has a greater plan for our lives. His plans, as I mentioned before this, are higher than our plans. His plans are for us to hold on to him and walk in his ways. Hallelujah. The next point to lead a godly life is giving. Some of us, we just give our one-tenth. And even as Pastor Raja has always spoken, he has said, what do you mean by one-tenth? In 24 hours, two hours, 40 minutes, two hours plus, time is your tithe to God and anything beyond it is your offering unto the Lord. But yet, we just look at our salaries and what we get and just take one-tenth and, you know, we just throw it onto the Lord's feet. Is that what the Lord is expecting? The world and the fullness thereof, He has given us. He has given us his abundance, his blessings for us to thank him, to praise him, to glorify him, to walk in his ways. For his plan for our lives is eternity and nothing but eternity. Hallelujah. So you may giving a way of life. What do you want to give in your life? Do you just want to give your leftovers, your secondhand clothes? Or do you want to bless people the way God blesses you? If you have something new in your life, why didn't you give something new to somebody and bless them? Because God gave us enough that we can bless people. And God says, the more you bless, the more will he bless you. Hallelujah. So God loves a cheerful giver. Your money, your bank accounts could be closed overnight. Your things... So many people have lost their businesses overnight. But the blessings, that the seed that you are sowing, sowing in people's lives, in their health, in their finances, in, in, in their families, that is what will bring a great harvest in your life. Amen? So you will never be living in lack because God lives in you and he will sustain you. He will provide for your needs because he is Jehovah Jireh. 
your provider. Hallelujah. The seventh point, forgiving other people. In Ephesians chapter 4 verses 26 to 27. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. It clearly means that we need, even before we go to bed, we need to forgive and repent. It goes hand in hand. We need to forgive people for all the things that they've hurt you with. Forgiveness has to come from deep within you. Forgiveness is not something you just pluck out of a tree. But forgiveness is something that when God gave you that gift of forgiveness, He gave it freely. He gave it, He sent His only Son, Jesus, for that very fact. Because He knew we all fall in His sight. We have all fallen. And He forgives us day after day. Even though He went up on the cross, He took our burdens, He took our curses, He took our sin. Even today, church, we are still sinning. And we find it sometimes so difficult to forgive, including myself. Let us all make a wow, make a decision to forgive and to repent of everything. You know, whether it is our ego that is preventing us or our pride. Let's lay it all down at the Lord's feet. Surrender everything to Him, for it matters not. It only matters that He is holding our hand and lifting us up as He has promised lest we dash our foot against a stone. All his promises are yes and amen. Hallelujah. So we should be willing to forgive as the Lord forgave us. So today church, I encourage you, be wise to say, I want all these seven points to come alive in my life. I want to live these seven points in my life to have a godly life. And I want to walk that narrow way. Even though it is very difficult, it's very, very narrow. But yet, I want to walk that narrow way because my Jesus, he died for me. He gave up his life for me. His blood is still flowing down. I want to give my life once again to the Lord. Let us all close our eyes. Just one-on-one -on -one with Jesus and ask him for that favor. Ask him. For, that, for, the, for His Holy Spirit to guide you so that you can lead a godly life. That when you walk there on the judgment day, you will be able to walk through the narrow way, boldly and strongly, being separated through His love, being in His kingdom, for His kingdom. Let us all receive the word from God. That God is a forgiving God. He is a merciful God. He is here to lift us up. He is here to redeem us. To walk with us. To deliver us. And we have hope in Christ Jesus. We thank you and we praise you Heavenly Father for your promises. For every one of your promises are yes and amen. We thank you Lord for your guidance in our lives. We thank you for sending your Holy Spirit who is our comforter and our counselor who will direct our steps, who will lead us. We thank you for the word of God. We thank you, Lord, for leading us in the word today, O oh God, that we will meditate on the word of God, that we will sit in prayer, O oh God, that we will be more giving of our time, giving of, our, of, our, of the things that we have been blessed with, O oh God, that we will be obedient to your word, O oh Lord, that we will walk in the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Yes, O oh Master, that we will be more forgiving, O oh God, and we will walk the walk that Jesus walked. In the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray. Amen and amen.